It's no secret that the Glaive Prime has been labeled as the best melee in the game or at least one of the best melees in Warframe and to be honest it's for good reason. In this video we're going to be talking about the Glaive Prime, what makes it so good, is it worth the serious platinum investment, are there better options etc etc. But first a huge thank you to our channel members for your doubloon support, it really means a lot, thank you so much. Firstly, what is the Glaive Prime? Well, it's a Glaive type weapon. Ironic, there's a Glaive Prime and Glaives are a type of weapon in Warframe. But anyway, Glaives are thrown melees. But the attraction to Glaives is the fact that you can throw them and heavy attack or alternate fire while the Glaive is in mid-air. It will then explode, dealing a large amount of damage in a radius. You can do this by holding down your melee button and then pressing alternate fire to explode it, timing the explosion when it is near enemies. Now what makes the Glaive Prime so special is the fact that it has forced slash and impact procs on the heavy attack explosion and big amounts of slash damage, meaning it absolutely shreds pretty much everything in Warframe. Yes, it won't do as well against Corpus enemies because of the shields, but don't be fooled, it still does a considerable amount of damage. So the Glaive is a Grenier killer. It can take you all the way to level cap comfortably. It's a clearing weapon to delete groups of enemies and allows you to use single target weapons against tougher enemies without having to deal with the masses. You will pretty much be only using the Glaive for the throwing and heavy attack explosion mechanic. The normal melee of the Glaives is not the greatest. The base Glaive does not have forced slash procs, which is why the primed variant is considerably better because the primed does have forced slash procs. So to answer your question, this is one of those rare cases that the Primed is a lot better than the original. The Glaive Prime came with the Ember Prime Axis. Now the Glaive Prime is a very expensive Primed weapon. You can get it on the market now for about 380 to 400 Platinum. And the reason for this is because it was last shown in 2020, three years ago. Now we don't know if Ember Prime will come back in the Prime Resurgence soon after this video, but we will have to hope and see. And of course, it is also one of the best weapons in the game, which is why it's so expensive. The question is, is it worth the investment? Well, it depends. If you are comparing it to other Glaive types like the Serata and Zorus, well, they can still do a lot of damage to carry you through the game. In my opinion, the only reason that you will need to get the Glaive Prime is when A, you are pretty much in the end game and you have quite a bit of weapons and you would simply just like to have a weapon that will carry you in endurance runs and you would just like to delete groups of enemies. And then B, if you just have a lot of excess platinum. If you aren't near the end game or don't have a lot of platinum to waste, my opinion is just stick to the Serata or even the Zorus, but I say Serata over the Zorus and I will explain why in that video. I will be making a Serata video. I'm not saying don't get the Glaive Prime, I'm just saying it's a very good weapon, but you don't need to spend 400 platinum to get it. You can do fine without it. Now let's talk about the Glaive Prime characteristics. The Glaive Prime is an MR10 weapon. It is a slash based weapon and it deals primarily slash damage on the normal melee attacks, but forced procs on the heavy attack explosion and normal throw. It also falls procs impact as well. It can be wielded with a single handed secondary. And what is cool about that is if you throw the glaive prime, you can shoot your secondary or you can reload your primary or secondary while it's in mid flight and it won't interrupt the reload animations when it returns to you. So this is super handy if you want to throw your glaive and shoot your primer while it's in mid air. If you melee while the glaive is in mid flight, it'll command it to return back to you. The glaive prime has an innate of one meter punch through. The heavy attack explosion has a radius of 4.8 meters and when you explode it, it forces the glaive to return to you. It is also worth noting that range mod like reach does not affect the explosion radius. Condition overload does not affect the glaive prime explosion. The explosion does not need line of sight and also procs blast. The glaive prime also has the fastest flight speed of all glaives. It also has a decent base crit chance of 24% and a crit multiplier of 2 times and the charge throws have a crit multiplier of 2.4 times. Now let's move on to the Glaive Prime builds. Firstly, I want to talk about Glaive Stances. They are extremely tedious to get. You can get Gleaming Talon from Leech Ospreys for a very low chance, and Astral Twilight from Arena in Sedna, which is a bit easier to get to be fair. My advice is if you don't feel like farming them, then just buy them with Platinum. 
Now there is always a huge debate between Glaive users which stance to use, Gleaming or Astral. My personal experience, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, especially when it comes to the Glaive Prime. You're going to be mainly throwing your Glaive Prime and both stances just do significant damage and delete enemies. To be honest, this one is just each to their own. I generally have used Gleaming Talon, but Astral Twilight works perfectly fine. The stances generally affect the normal melee attacks more than the throwing attacks. When it comes to Glaives, there are three extremely important mods to have. That being Amalgam Organ Shatter, Killing Blow, and Volatile Quick Return. Amalgam Organ Shatter is obtained through the Thermia Fracture event, Pain, but it gives you 65% heavy attack wind-up speed. Killing Blow increases your heavy attack damage and increases your wind-up speed as well. The Glaive wind-up speed is affected by heavy attack wind-up speed. This is a side-by-side -side comparison. Volatile Quick Return is quite an important mod. What this does is reduces the amount of bounces, increases the blast radius of the explosion, and gives you a 100% chance to explode on bounce while removing punch through. Meaning, if I throw it at enemies, it won't go through them, instead it will explode when it hits them. This explosion is separate from your alternate fire explosion, meaning if you time it right, you can do two explosions in one throw. The explosion from this mod also happens when you throw it on the ground or against objects. However, this explosion only does 50% of the heavy attack damage, and does not usually proc guaranteed procs except the guaranteed slash proc from the Glaive Prime. So this mod is very important, allowing you to do two explosions per throw, meaning more damage in the long run. And then we move on to the mods. For the build I run, I go both sacrificial mods. We go flat damage because remember condition overload doesn't affect the explosions, so flat damage to increase the slash proc damage. We go sacrificial steel because that is 275% crit chance times two because the throw explosions count as a heavy attack. I then went Corrupt Charge to have a permanent 2 times combo, which means we can use Gladiator Might and just grab an extra 20% crit chance, or actually 40% because of the heavy attacks. And also we will get scaling for the combo. Because the Glaive Prime is Slash, we go a Bane. A Bane is a massive increase in damage here. This is the first build I run, and I use this 99% of the time when I'm doing Grenier runs, or Endurance runs, or just anywhere. Some people opt for power throw. I know power throw is somewhat good, but personally I do not like it because it is a very tedious mod. Basically you get extra throw damage on consecutive throws up to 300%. And this damage is multiplicative, which in theory is a massive damage boost. However, for this buff to proc, you have to be holding down your melee button as the glaive returns, otherwise you will just keep losing the buff. This means that you're pretty much just going to be hardcore focusing on timing your melee animations and not focusing on the game. Plus, when it comes to close quarters, unless you have godly reflexes and timing, you're not going to sustain this buff. The only way that you can keep this buff up is at medium to long range throws, which is just not worth it in my opinion. So this is entirely up to you if you would like to change your playstyle. When it comes to modding viral, in my opinion, the slash damage from just a bane is more than enough and the status chance off of the heavy attack explosions isn't great. You will have to throw it more than once to even proc just a few viral procs. So you're better off focusing on buffing the slash procs and then priming with a secondary, which is where the handy mechanic I explained earlier is quite nice where the glaive won't cancel animations. Now what you could do is you can also change up the glaive to be a utility weapon. I haven't tested these mods before, but when I was making this video I saw these two mods which I had just never paid attention to. And that is Combo Fury and Mark of the Beast. These two mods could have some serious potential to buff your secondaries. If you want to try these mods out, you could use my original build and just replace Corrupt Charge and Gladiator Might for these two mods. That should still suffice for damage so that you can proc these mods for your secondary. Or you could just use one of them, it's your choice. If you get your hands on this weapon and don't have all the fancy mods, then you can use this budget-ish build for an expensive ass weapon. Let's quickly talk about Rivens. Do you need a Riven for the Glaive Prime? Absolutely not. There is no need. This weapon can go to level cap super comfortably without one. The only reason you should get one is if you love this weapon and simply want to min-max the shit out of this weapon. That is the only reason. I actually do have a Riven. It was gifted to me, so a huge thank you to Demon Killer. He's a community member who generously gifted me this Riven. For the stats that you're looking for, well, crit chance and crit damage definitely, but I will say the minus status duration is a bit of a rip, as you don't want less status duration because that means your slash procs will be ticking less, ultimately meaning less damage. But this is only minus 32%, and well, I do enough damage as is that I pretty much one tap anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. If you can actually get a plus status duration, or just melee damage will suffice. 
I don't think you need a ribbon. They are insanely expensive in the 1000s of platinum. And it's just, nah. It, only if you want to min-max and you are at the end game. Final verdict. Yes, the Glaive Prime is an extremely good weapon, arguably the strongest slash weapon in the game. It deletes groups of enemies, especially Grenier enemies, but it's not a necessity. There are other Glaives that you can get for no platinum and will still carry you. It is worth it to get, but you don't have to rush for it. As a Glaive user, I don't really use melees much, to be honest, besides Glaives. It's the only melees that I really use. It is super fun to use them. They are really satisfying and you won't regret it. But the question is, is it worth the price? In my opinion, it could be a little bit cheaper, but either way, it's still good. What are your thoughts on this? I would like to hear it in the comments below. Stay tuned for the Serato video that's coming out very soon after this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you did. I'll see you guys in the next one.